G'day guys, Moose here. Welcome back to the garage. And I've got another safety video for you guys on my most favorite tool in the shed. No, it's not me. The cordless drill. I've got a few tips and tricks for you guys to keep you nice and safe and super confident. Let's go. Sawdust and chrome. Sawdust and chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and chrome. <laughs> <laughs> I think the cordless drill is pretty much a must-have piece of equipment in your workshop. Um, anything from small DIY jobs inside the house to some of the massive projects we've built out here in the garage. Um, I've honestly used mine thousands and thousands of times. This video, the key is I want to teach you how to use them, teach you some of the features, a little bit of advice about what to buy and what to look out for. Um, but please hang around to the end because I've got a few tips and tricks that uh, I hope you get a bit of a laugh out of. Um, let's get straight into it. Oh, again, if you love what we're up to and you don't want to miss out anything, make sure you click all the buttons that you're meant to. All right. My plan with these safety videos is obviously to keep you guys safe, give you guys some tips and some confidence to go buy some gear. Whatever drags you and your families into the garage, and building a few projects is my number one goal. With the cordless drills, I do confess I've got a couple of Makitas and um, I love them to death. I've been teaching for a long time, I've been mucking around in the garage for a long time and um, to be honest, the Makitas have never let me down. I think they're well priced, I love that everything's interchangeable with all the batteries and all the other tools you can get and um, within reason, they're kind of pretty, they're bulletproof. So. Um, Whatever your budget allows, um, grab the best you can. I've been, through the, I've been down the road with the cheaper tools and um, to be honest, they just end up getting thrown around the garage because they're just rubbish. So um, spend what you can, but whatever gets you into the garage, I'm a massive fan of. All right, let's go. Like always, number one rule is our safety and our PPE. So make sure you've got your safety glasses on. The main thing with the drills, depending on what you're up to, God forbid, if a drill bit does shatter for any reason, it's hardened steel, and I would hate that to hit something that we can't grow back. So safety glasses all the time. Earmuffs um, are a good idea. It does get a smidge noisy. And um, I'm a fan of the apron, because I like to look after my, uh, <laughs> my good flannies. All right, now let's see what the drills can do. Also, I suggest you hang around to the end of the video because I'm going to explain what all these different drill bits do and some of the fixings and fasteners you can get. Um, oh, there's a couple things I hope you get a bit of a laugh out of. Alright. Alright guys, my two drills. Traditional cordless, and this is what they call an impact driver. It's smaller, uh, less weight to it, um, battery life lasts a bit longer, and it's got this cool, quick, interchangeable um, chuck for all the different bits that you can use. There's a whole array of bits you can get these days. I'll show you those in a sec. Um, forward and reverse, and the trigger, the pressure you put on the trigger, decides how quick it goes. Um, I love it, use it all the time. Cordless, a um, bit more heavy duty. It's got the three functions I'll explain in a sec and all the torque settings that you can use. Two speed, forward and reverse as well. First things first, easiest thing to do. Battery change. To get them off, you gotta push down on the white button, pull them apart, easy. When you put them back in, it just slides on and give it a tap. The best thing about this, my hot tip this section so far, is make sure you've got more than one battery. Nothing worse than getting your batteries gone flat and um, you don't have a spare ready to go. So make sure you've always got one on charge or fully charged and um, you're set to go no matter what happens. And just a point about the batteries as well. These are 18 volt batteries, 
I think pretty much everything you buy these days is 18 volts. Um, as they improved, 18 volts is kind of how much power you've got at hand. And the three amp hours, you'll see a different numbers for that one. That's pretty much how long the battery lasts before it needs to be recharged again. So um, the higher the amp hours, the longer the battery will last. And everything's lithium ion these days. My impact driver. Used mostly for putting in screws. The best thing about it is the quick release interchangeable kind of setup for the drill bit you use. That's a Phillips bit. They come in different sizes. Um, you can get the flat ended ones too. You can buy specific drill bits with the same settings. So they're interchangeable. Um, Awesome bit of kit, a little bit more expensive than normal drill bits. Countersunk bits, I seem to use those a lot, and these guys a lot. You can get, if you can, you can buy actual little chucks. So with that set up, you can put in a normal drill bit. And you can buy little kits like this. It's got an attachment, connects in, then it's got kind of a, a collection of different drill bits, um, Phillips bits, flat bits that you can use. Um, and they're all interchangeable in this. What I love most about this guy is, and we use them a lot at school these days, is because it's lightweight, so if you're spending a long time on them, you don't get too fatigued. The battery life lasts a bit longer, and um, it's perfect if you're putting, spending the day putting screws in and out of stuff. Um, I really like this one. It's uh, if you can afford it, I would get both. The key features with my cordless drill. Um, again, same battery setup. It's got a forward and reverse. Forward, reverse. Easiest way to remember it is I think of a clock face. So if I'm going forwards, it goes the same as a clock face. If I need to go backwards, anti-clockwise. So forward and reverse. On top it has two speeds. Again, like the impact driver, you just you control the speed. So if you only squeeze the trigger a little versus a lot in both settings, um, you always have control of the speed. It has three functions. This is the driver function to put in screws has the drill bit function for normal drilling and it has a hammer function as well. You just twist them to put them in whatever setting you need. When it's in the driver setting, the screw, the, it's a little screw icon, that's when the clutch comes into play. So you can set the clutch at whatever torque setting you need. So depending on what you up, you're up to, um, that becomes super handy. I'll show you in a little demo in a bit about it. When you're in the drill setting, drill bit setting, these don't count anymore. It's just like a normal um, cordless drill. And when you're in the hammer function, it's kind of the same as the drill, but the hammer function is only used for uh, brickwork or masonry work when you've really got to smash through something. And the main difference is when it's in the hammer function, the chuck as well as spinning, rotates in and out too. So you can smash through the brickwork. I'll show you what those drill bits look like in a sec too. But they're the main three settings that you'll use. Speeds, forward and reverse. Um, like I was saying, it is a bit heavier than the impact driver, but um, mate, this thing's a rock star. It's done a thousand jobs. All right, let's get into some of the other bits. Next thing to show you is how to actually fit the bits into them. Like on the impact driver, everything was real quick release, nice and easy. Just make sure you pull this forward, it clicks in, let it out, and it's locked in. With this guy, like I was saying, it's a keyless chuck. When you spin the chuck, I hope you can see, the jaws go out, so they go back or they go in. So, if I'm putting in a drill bit, I've got to make sure it fits, goes all the way, 
and you spin it till it's tight. You know it's tight when it clicks. Perfect. And to undo, oh sorry, so it's ready to go. To undo, remember, think of the clock. Anti-clockwise to undo. With these guys, they've got a flat surface for you to clamp to. So make sure you clamp on it, not the round stuff. Same deal. Wind it up till it's tight. Make sure it clicks. And you're ready to go. Undo. Um, spade bit, it's exactly the same. Make sure you're not clamping on the kind of the round section. Make sure you clamp on the flat, say, the flat surfaces. Make sure you go the right way. Make sure you do the clicks. That one's done too. So it's nice and easy. Just rethink the clock and um, you chuck. It's just in and out, but make sure it's clicking when you've got it on nice and tight. When you become a gangster on the drill, you'll just be able to hold the chuck, use your trigger, you'll be able to loosen it. Nice and easy. But please, practice that after you're an expert. With the two speed options on the drill, I got our number one, the nice and slow one, and my number two, which I pretty much live in all the time. Only time I've ever really used the number one is I'll show you. Let's say I'm putting in a screw, and for whatever reason, it won't drive in far enough, or because it's such a hard timber, and you're starting to either damage your, um, your drive a bit, or you're starting to damage the screw a tiny bit. Sometimes if you flick it into one, put a bit more weight behind you, you can control the speed and you'll get a bit more, a bit more purchase and a bit more control. So, number one. Oh, also, if you're doing like um, lightweight work or small screws, um, the slower speed's not a bad option. Um, the kids are learning, maybe start on number one with your small screws and then work their way up. So number one is if for whatever reason you need a little bit more control or you're trying to bury a screw that you can't quite get. Um, that's pretty much the only time I ever use the, one, the, the lower speed. All right, let's move on. Did I tell you what happened to my last drill? When I used to use it, it used to get like real hot. It used to heat up and I was starting to get real concerned. So I rang the company and said, blah, blah, my drill. And they said, don't even worry about it. It's just a fire drill. <laughs> Leave a comment. Rate that joke out of 10 in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll have a giggle. All right, let's get back into it. All right, one of my first hot tips is whatever screw or fasteners you're using, make sure you've got the correct kind of driver bit that you're using for it as well. They have to match each other. So for example, I'm putting in a bunch of screws. It's important that my Phillips head bit matches the head of the screw. Like screwdrivers, this is a two point, that's a one point, so it's Obviously, it's a finer tip versus the number two, which is pretty standard. So my number two fits this perfect. You can get corresponding Phillips head bits that do the same thing. So these guys are all the same. And that one's a double-ended one, but the Phillips end is the same size. So they're all perfect. 
What you can't do, and my apologies if you can't see them, they're just tiny screws, these ones, and these are little like number one point heads. So if I'm trying to use one that's too big, it either doesn't fit at all, or it might fit just a little, but it destroys the head of the screws. So that's no good to us. So what you need is you can get finer point Phillips head bits. So that fits perfect, fits perfect, no good, not very good. Oh, second hot tip. Sorry, I've just thought of something else. I don't know if you can see it, but the end of this one is damaged. That's because it's a cheap and nasty um, driver bit. So spend the extra bucks and get the good ones because the rubbish ones don't last very long. So Phillips head bits, they have to match. I've got a slotted screw here and a slotted bit. I'm not saying anything about these other than whoever invented the slotted screw is the devil because they're horrible things to use. So avoid them. I've got some hex, hex, hex head bits here. These are our metal cutting ones and timber cutting ones. So these guys need their corresponding bit. So it fits to the top of the heads of those, perfect. So again, they have to match. Um, and the last thing I was gonna show you is, I use these when I do a bit of automotive stuff if I'm being lazy, because these all fit in the drill. They're all different sizes. And sometimes I use them with a spanner and a nut and actually use these to drive the bolts on or put the nuts on. So if you get down the track and you want an excuse to buy some more tools, get yourself a set of these. I don't even know what you call them, but they're all different, different sizes and they're perfect for bolts. All right, next couple hot tips are, the smaller the screw, easier it is to get them in. So if you're practicing with kids or if it's yourself, use the small screws first. And if I'm ever drilling or um, want to bore some holes into anything with the drill bits, I try and do it at about shoulder height so I can get my body weight behind it. Same upright, same if I'm doing something on the workbench. I try to get everything in line with my shoulder because the trick is you're using your body weight more than your wrists and forearms. So, little screw. And everything's nice and straight. When you're practicing, the idea is you're getting the head of the screw to fit flush. So you start it off nice and slow. Once you got it going, And use your body weight behind it. These are all getting a little bit bigger. Next one. If you're having a bit of trouble with the bigger screws, with the bigger ones, what you can do is use your smaller screw and kind of put it like a pilot hole in, or even better, you use the countersunk bits. Depending on where you're working, you might have to use your countersunk bits too if you're near an edge. So, oh, the hot tip is making sure you can get your body weight behind it. Let's do some on the flat. My next hot tip, I'm gonna to explain to you the torque settings. So, I'm on the drill function, I've got my torque settings here. So if I have it wound right down to number one, what the deal is, when there's a little bit of resistance, the clutch kicks in and it will disengage the drive shaft. So as soon as there's a little bit of resistance, it won't drill any further. I'll show you. So if I'm gonna put a screw in here, don't forget, I control the speed with the trigger and I've got my shoulder over the top of it. You can hear it clicking. So that means the clutch is engaged and the drive shaft has stopped. So on setting number one, that's as far as I'll get. 
Let's try number six. Same size screw. So that's perfect. It's flush with the surface and then the clutch is engaged and it won't go any further. That's what we're after. So let's exaggerate it. Let's say I wind it up to, uh, let's go all the way. We're on 20, same size screw. It will just bury itself as far as I can push it. So it's a good idea to start kind of, be nice to your tools, start off lightly, and you can go, well, one to, number one didn't quite work. You can wind it up a little bit. No, oh, I'm right on six. If it's a tiny bit above, sorry, that was four, this one's six. And I don't mind that. If you need it a smidge more, you just decide where you need it. So that's what we're after. So to get that one out, reverse, bit of pressure. That's why we don't want to bury screws. We don't want this to happen. So use the torque setting to your advantage so you can get them nice and flush. Oh, one more thing. I'll show you on here. So this is a harder timber. Let's go back to number six. Got my drill, same size, um, sorry, same size screw. So with the harder timbers, my six doesn't suit. So I might have to crank it up a little bit. Let's try nine. Not quite enough, a little bit more. I reckon maybe a 13. Oh. Now that gives me another problem. If the timbers rock hard and your screw's not gonna, it's just not gonna get there, you start damaging the heads. I hope you can see it. If you start damaging, damaging them, you kind of have to make a decision. If I damage it too much, I'm not going to get it in and I'm not going to be able to get it out. So my hot tip again, another one would be reverse, get it out. That one's now rubbish. Grab a new one. Let's see if we can get this one in. This is a rock hard piece of timber. As promised, a quick chat about some of the drill bits you can get. These are normal drill bits. Uh, kind of what everybody knows. Normal heads, they come in thousands of different sizes. I did want to introduce to you, and I hope you can see it. These are called Brad Point drill bits. These are specifically for woodwork. They're more accurate. It's got like its own oh, almost center punch tip to them. Um, these are excellent. A little bit more expensive, but if you can to spend some coin. A set of these for timber only. Please, timber only, don't use them on metal. Um, masonry bits. So these have the f kind of the funky ends on them. So these are for brickwork, masonry work, smashing through the mortar in between bricks. These are what you use for um, wall plugs, nylon nails, you know the, the red, blue, and I think they're green wall plugs you see. I don't have any by chance. Um, that's what they're for, for brickwork. Spade bits. Spade bits are um, come in obviously a thousand different sizes. Um, awesome. I guess my tip with these is, I actually don't use these very much, so I bought a pretty cheap and nasty set because I only use them once in a blue moon. Um, they've got the massive spike on them, so depending on what you're doing, they might not suit, and they're not super accurate, or well, mine aren't in particular. Um, 
But I do have a good set of four snip bits. So it's the same idea, it's to cut a big kind of hole, but it's got a more of a shallow, more accurate point to it. Um, I use these a fair bit, so I have a good set of these. Four snip bits. Our normal countersunk bits, everybody's seen these before, um, super handy, especially if you have to do any drilling near the edges of any timber. So they're your normal countersunk bits. This is an old school one I've got that I use once in a blue moon, sometimes in metalwork. Um, same deal, it's just to cut a nice countersunk top into a piece of timber and um, if I want my heads to be flush. Countersunk bits. We've spoken about make, making sure your screws match the bits you're using. So if the tiny little number one points, make sure you've got the right one. These are our number two Phillips bits. And I'm assuming everybody knows that screws come in a thousand different sizes. Uh, and my last point is the flat screws. Slotted screws, um, they're just horrible. Don't use them. Um, my last tip is, depending on what your budget is and how often you're gonna use it, be a little bit smart with how you spend your money. So spend your money where you know it's going to get the most use. Um, don't skimp on Phillips head driver bits. Don't skimp on countersunk bits because they snap easier, the cheap ones. Oh, we've got these, the hex head screws. You see them a lot with roofing screws. Um, we use these a fair bit too. Um, they're good, I actually really enjoy using them. Final tip, if it's Smoko, and you're not a big fan of the peel on an apple, check this out. Simples and hardly any mess. <laughs> Let's go. That wraps up this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I will chuck another video on with a few more tips and tricks of stuff I've learned over the years. But today's video, strictly your safety, a demo on how to use a gear, a few of the functions and features that you're gonna get. And if it gets you over the line into the, into the uh, hardware store to buy a cordless, I'd be stoked. Whatever gets you out, gets your hands dirty, gets the family involved. Um, you won't regret it, I promise. Again, practice makes perfect. Over the years of watching students, a lot of them kind of not quite get it right. It's usually they've got the wrong bit for the wrong fastener. So make sure they match, match. Make sure everything's always in line, whether it's horizontal or vertical. And um, don't forget to use your body weight. Um, get your shoulder behind it. From my family to yours, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys being involved, um, lots of love from us to you guys. And again, if you like what we're up to, click the like, subscribes, um, leave comments, and um, don't forget about that notification bell. Um, yeah, we love hearing from you guys. So get out of here, go down the shops and buy some gear. All right, see you. Guys, on my moments, my most favorite bugger, bugger, in teaching bugger. Through a fair, fair few brands, brands, brands. Amp hour, sorry, got it wrong. Bugger. Finally, from my family to yours, uh, we love that. What that we love, bugger.
kids. I'm sure mum will love the help in the kitchen. <laughs>